Welcome back to the intersection of pop culture and common sense. This week, we're heavy on the pop culture. We've got some hot topics to discuss, including the sad passing of Liam Payne, Cynthia Erivo's wicked meltdown, and this week's box office streaming suggestions, and so, so, so much more. So make sure you have liked and subscribed to After the Snap so you'll stay connected with me. I'm Tasha Pierce, and this is the weekly wrap up. Our first story of the day is about the tragic passing of One Direction's Liam Payne. Now, One Direction is a group that came around 2010 in the early 2010s. And I was out of my boy band phase by then, but I can imagine that fans of the group would feel like I would feel if uh, one of the members of New Edition had passed away, especially in as tragic a manner as Liam Payne's uh, death has turned out to be. He was in Buenos Aires on a bit of a holiday. We know at least he and his girlfriend were there. Buenos Aires police, on Wednesday, issued a statement saying that Liam Payne had fallen from a third-story balcony at the Casa Sura Hotel in the Argentinian capital, and he sustained extremely serious injuries. Those injuries included multiple traumas, internal and external hemorrhages. So this fall resulted in his death. Now, the staff at the hotel had already called uh, emergency services because he had been acting erratically in the moments prior to his death. A toxicology report is still pending, but uh, authorities have said that some substances were found in his room that may have contributed to his death. The authorities have also indicated that he was under the influence, definitely, and that he was alone in the room when he fell. Uh, a local official cited by the Associated Press said Payne had jumped from the balcony of his room. There are conflicting reports on whether he jumped or fell because if he was unconscious, it, uh, it would look like he jumped when he actually fell over the balcony. So that is up in the air. Now the police rushed to the scene just after 5 p.m. after the hotel's manager had placed an emergency 911 call who again, spoke about the guest who was under the influence of drugs and alcohol and had destroyed some objects in the room. That employee said, hey, um, there's, this room has a balcony and the guest may be at particular risk. And it's just unfortunate that that turned out to be correct. Of course, there will be an, a further investigation into his death. Yeah, his, his family is truly distraught and is grieving the loss of Liam, and they issued a statement that read in part, Liam will forever be in our hearts, and we will remember him for his kind, funny, and brave soul. So condolences to the family of Liam Payne and the fans who are going to fill a hole in their life because of the passing of this very young man, very young, very talented, extremely unfortunate situation. Now we're going to talk about one that has left me kind of scratching my head. Okay, we know that Wicked, the musical, is coming out, but it's coming not to a stage near you, but to a big screen near you. Now, this iteration of Wicked is starring Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. It's coming out at theaters on November 22nd in the U.S. So they're starting to do a lot of press around this movie. As you would expect, posters have come out, the official poster, and then fans will come up with their own fan art surrounding this movie. And it was one particular picture that caught the eye of Cynthia Erivo, and man, she let it be very well known how she felt about this poster. After seeing this image, she took to Instagram 
and she let everybody know that she was not amused. She said, this is the wildest, most offensive thing I have seen, equal to the awful AI of us fighting. Side note, that is awful. Don't do that. Okay. And then she also said, equal to people posing the question, is yo hootenanny, in so many words, green? Um, which also, not a good look. Don't do that. She goes on to say, let me put this right here to remind you and cleanse your palate. None of this is funny. None of it is cute. It degrades me. It degrades us. The original poster is an illustration. I am a real life human being who chose to look right down the barrel of the camera to you, the viewer, because without words, we communicate with our eyes. Our poster is an homage and not an imitation. To edit my face and hide my eyes is to erase me. And that is just deeply hurtful. That was her statement. And you've seen the images of the posters. The one on the bottom right of the screen is the original Wicked musical poster. The one to the left on the bottom is the fan art that we were speaking of. And then the one on the top is what Disney has put out as its official poster. And look, I can understand seeing fan art done of yourself and not particularly liking it. But we got to remember now, this is fan art. I came through the ranks in customer service. Most of my jobs have been in customer service. And once upon a blue moon ago, they used to tell us, if a customer has a bad experience with you, that customer is going to tell 10 other customers who's going to tell 10 more potential customers, and you will have hurt the business immensely for you having a bad day or a bad encounter with a guest. Those days are long gone because a person's reach is no longer the 10 people in the orbit closest to them. The person's reach is now hundreds, maybe potentially thousands of people. If a thousand people have a bad interaction with you and then they each go out and tell a thousand more people, well, you can see how the damage can be done. And public figures get into these types of altercations, uh, online altercations with a potential customer, a potential viewer of their movie, a potential fan, they are immensely hurting the final product because so many people could look at this and say, I don't want to support this. It would be one thing if what this poster did was so intensely racist, misogynistic, offensive, that any reasonable person could look at it and say, oh my God, I would be offended. But in this case, I consider myself reasonable. And I've seen the opinions of uh, at least a hundred other people who I might know to be reasonable people. And none of us can see how this escalated to this point. I really think Cynthia Arrivo in this situation overreacted. I think that she is being overly sensitive to some of the things that have been negatively implied or said about her or her character, like making the characters fight. That's horrible. Or like asking uh, personal questions about the color of your nether regions. That's terrible. This, this was just fan art. And when you look at it, if the numbers on that movie do not meet the standard to what Disney and what theater owners and what everybody else expects, we might have to come back to this moment. That's if the movie is good. Could be bad, just the same way I was talking about Joker Foley, I do. We could come back to this moment, to this interaction, and that would be all the reason that you need to find out why a movie is suffering.
This is not for me to try to erase Cynthia Arrivo or to try to invalidate the way that she feels or trivialize her emotions. But in this case, in this case, I do believe that Cynthia Arrivo has overreacted to this whole entire thing and it could potentially hurt the bottom line of Wicked. But I want to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think this was necessary? Do you see what made her so upset about this poster? Because this chick just don't see it. I'm sorry, I don't see it. So I would be happy to hear from you before we move on to what's next. Before I go any further, I'd like to say a very big thank you to my patrons and channel members. You'll see them flowing across your screen right now. Thank you guys for keeping the lights on around here. If you too would like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash Tasha Pierce, or you can click that join button right here on this here video. Or maybe you might just want to send me a one-time donation via Super Thanks or Cash App. All of those will be down in the description. Thank you so much. And now, what is becoming one of my favorite segments of the week, we are going to be breaking down this week's box office top five roundup. There has been a slight shakeup of the top five. If we will remember uh, last week, sitting atop of our box office was Terrifier 3. Well, this week, that has changed. Now, we're still staying with horror at our number one spot. This week, it is Paramount's Smile 2. This is Smile 2's opening weekend, and it opened with a projected $23 million three-day weekend. Um, against that $28 million budget, Smile got a whole lot to smile about, right? <laughs> smile 2 is in a very, very good place. Anytime you almost match your budget, with your first week week at the box office. So good for Smile 2. Uh, number two, holding steady, is The Wild Robot. Again, this is a universal flick. And it again, it lost like 25 theaters from last week. But it still is in our top two. It is at $10.7 million for the weekend, giving it a four-week total of $102.3 million. Number three, is Terrifier 3, the little old movie that could, it gained 248 theaters. And over this three-day weekend, it added $9.8 million, making its two-week total $36.7 million, which is about 12 to 13 times its budget. So, yay. <laughs> Um, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is still sitting at number four. It lost 157 theaters from last week, but it is still hanging in there. $5 million three-day haul for a total over seven weeks of $284 million. So pretty good, pretty good haul for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And last but not least on our top five is a new movie, We Live in Time. We Live in Time is an A24 flick. It gained 980 theaters from last week, and it has made a uh, whopping $4.3 million over the three-day, bringing its two-week total to $4.6 million. So, a couple of entries from last week. You might have noticed is missing. And last week, we talked about Joker 2, Foley Adu, being in over 4,000 theaters. And I said, I got a feeling it's going to lose some theaters. And that feeling was correct. It lost 1,245 theaters. Now, as of these early projections, it is sitting at number six. So it was just edged out of the top five by We Live in Time. Over this three day, it has made $2.2 million. And its three week total is $56.4 million. Very, very disappointing start for Joker Foley. I do, but we talked about that already. So we had a shakeup in our box office top five. And um, of these movies, I uh, probably won't see any of them. Maybe, maybe The Wild Ro Robot, because it has got a streaming release date. As a matter of fact, right now, you can buy it 
or rent it at home. So it is there for you to buy or rent. It is a very high rental, if you ask me. Prime Video, you can buy for $29.99 or you can rent for $24.99. So I'm like, if I had to make a choice there, I'd probably buy it. But Wild Robot is available for you to watch at home now. Another one that had edged out of the top five was Piece by Piece. Like I said, it doesn't have to make an awful lot of money to become profitable because it only costs $16 million to make. Um, I think that movie is on a good trajectory. We'll look at it more um, as the weeks go on to see where it is as far as profitability. But yeah, Smile 2 is is in a very good place. The Wild Robot is over exceeding. Uh, Terrifier 3 is a beyond expectations. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, after seven weeks, still hanging around in the top five. I can, I can say that that's a success and we live in time is getting a good start because this isn't one of those big budget movies. It doesn't have to make a whole lot of money to be profitable. All of these movies can probably expect to at least be pushed down in our top five or to be booted completely out of our top five for next week because Venom, The Last Dance. So the third installment of the Venom franchise is coming out this weekend. So I expect big things from that movie. It will not be as disappointing as uh, Joker Foley. I do. I think this is going to be our uh, big movie before we get our holiday push. But you guys tell me of these movies, which ones have you seen or do you want to see? And is Venom The Last Dance on your watch list? Let me know and we will move on to our next segment. So I've already told you what is new coming to the big screen. And now let's get to some what's coming soon to streaming. Taylor Perry's Beauty in Black is heading to Netflix and it's a drama series about two women with very different lives who become connected. Now, this series was created by Tyler Perry, who also wrote, directed, and produced. And if you haven't noticed, I don't talk about an awful lot of Tyler Perry stuff on this channel because I don't like his writing, right? So this is another one of his creations that he has written, directed, and produced. But I can't for years go on and on about how I don't like Tyler Perry productions if I don't give them a chance. And I'm going to give this one a chance because I really, really, really am looking forward to the 6888, which is uh, based on a true story. This is another Tyler Perry joint. And I want to give his stuff a chance. Before we get to that, hopefully he doesn't ruin that. It's based on a true story. How can you mess that up? That's not coming out until December 20th. So this will help me get my palette set for uh, what Tyler Perry has been up to here lately. Because it's been a long time since I've watched a Tyler Perry joint. Uh, the first half of the 16 episode series is going to premiere on Netflix on October 24th. And the second half has not been given its premiere date. So we'll get the first eight episodes on October 24th. Hopefully you will join me in watching that. Also coming on October 24th on Paramount Plus, we are getting the fifth and final season of Star Trek Lower Decks. Um, and you know, Star Trek has a very special place in my heart. This one is an acquired taste, but I really and truly hope that you would give this an opportunity. Give it a chance. Um, the synopsis for this season is an unknown force is destroying starships and threatening galactic peace. Luckily, the USS Cerritos crew isn't important enough for all, for all of that. Instead, they keep up with their duties, which are avoiding evil computers and getting stuck in caves. This is an adult animated series, so, you know, leave the kitties out of it. Things can get a little bit mature. Not all the time, but it can definitely get that way. But again, fifth and final season. I'm going to miss these characters. They started off kind of rough with me, 
but we grew together. We grew together. So let me know down in the comments if you'll be watching Star Trek Lower Decks. And finally, the last of my things that are coming soon on Max on October 23rd, Breath of Fire, which is a docu-series. It is about a lady named Katie Griggs, who is professionally known as Guru Jagat. She is an American Kundalini yoga teacher, podcaster, author, and the owner of both a fashion brand and a record label. She is the Jill of all trades. She's also noted for sharing QAnon conspiracy theories and interviewing conspiracy theories on her podcast. So not only is she a Jill of all trades, she might be a little bit of a fraud and she might be a little bit of a culty type person. Again, true story. So if you are into docu-series, uh, I think this is one that would probably be worth checking out. So that's what we've got coming this week, but coming soon, I, I, I got to talk about on November 14th, we are getting Cross. That's going to be on Prime Video. It is based on the James Patterson novels about Alex Cross and Aldous Hodge is playing Alex Cross. And baby, they had me at Aldous Hodge. So hopefully you will join me on November 14th in watching Cross on Prime Video. We are also closer to the piano lesson. Remember I told you guys a few weeks ago about the Washington family, Denzel and his sons. They are all collaborating on this huge movie that's going to be on Netflix. Well, that is coming on November 22nd. Um, we also at New York Comic Con got a few announcements. We've got an actual date for Daredevil Born Again. Now, if you are a Daredevil fan on Netflix, Disney Plus has promised us a mature, dark uh, Daredevil, kind of like what we are used to. They're not going to Disney-fy it. That has a date set of uh, March 4th. Skeleton Crew for our Star Wars fans. That's coming December 3rd with a two-episode premiere. And then Star Trek, Section 31. And y'all, I just told you guys how much I love Star Trek. Now, I'm going to remind us all of this stuff as it gets closer. But I just told you guys how much I love Star Trek. The first ever original Star Trek movie made for Paramount Plus will be called Section 31. And it is coming January 24th, and I cannot wait. There are some other series that are close on the horizon. Again, I'm going to give you guys all of that information as we get closer to those premieres. The ones I just talked about are ones that I am so super excited for. So I hope that you guys are equally as excited as I am. Let me know some of the favorite stuff that you heard this weekend that may have come out of New York Comic Con or what series are you looking forward to that's on the horizon? Let me know down in the comments. Let's go ahead on and put a bow on it because that's a wrap for this week's wrap up. Thank you once again for joining me at the intersection where common sense meets pop culture. We, had, we were heavy on the pop culture. We did apply some common sense today in the Cynthia Erivo situation, but you don't have to agree with me. Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below if you have not yet done so. What are you waiting on? Please hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn your notifications on so you know when we are doing this again, which is usually every Monday. But just do that, just to make sure. I'd hate to have you missing out. But anywho, in any way, I had a couple more things that I wanted to share with you. Like um, after we talked about American Psycho last week, now they want to do an American Psycho remake. We'll probably cover those at another time. Also, Tom Holland has evidently seen the Spider-Man 4 script and he is jabbering like only Tom Holland does. But all of that stuff can wait. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you spending time with me. And uh, yeah, we can do this again next week because darling, you deserve so much more than just tea. Peace.